balsam and now we're going to get it ready for salting and then after we've salted it we're going to tan it and after we've tanned it we're going to trim it and then we're going to sew them together and you'll end up with something like this so this is where Sue and I are up to at the moment with our possum skin throw for the bed it's got a long way to go yet as you can see so this is what you'll end up if you follow um, the easy steps I'm about to show you so see I've left a bit of belly fur there and you can see the joints um, if you're really keen you don't have to do that you can take the belly fur right out and I'll show you how to sew them so the joints are invisible um, I like doing it in the evening when I've got nothing better to do and it's up to you whether you um, do it with the belly fur or without you can match your skin so I've tried to match them here with greys as you can see there's a lot around here where we're catching them at the moment but whatever colour you like or the predominant colour in your area um, I'd advise you match it but you might want to have different looking skins on it which is fine now you're going to need a board to flesh your skins on and I'd like to really stress the importance of doing a good job of fleshing your skins if you don't you'll end up with a result that's disappointing uh, Sue and I travel a lot so we haven't got room for a proper fleshing bean so I just make do with whatever is around so this is just a bit of about six by one and a half I guess um, which is what in, in centimetres 14 by 1.5 I suppose or something like that um, so get yourself a board take the edges off it so just get a sander and just make sure you take all the rough edges off it because you don't want to damage your skin so just go down and around on your board like so and make sure there's no nails in it if you're using an old piece of course and if it's a bit um, I'd, I'd say it, well like I guarantee it's best to use wood that's been through a planer don't use rough sawn because it's going to pull fur out so just do that and then we'll go to the next stage right I'll finish this board off and I'll be back to you in a second okay the other tools you're going to need um, are pretty basic now when I was younger and I had no money I used to make the tools myself um, this thing actually is my mother gave it to me it's uh, from Alaska it's a fantastic tool for fleshing skins and I use it all the time if you haven't got one you can make one so you want a curved blade get an old um, a grinding wheel or something like that a steel one um, and just put an edge on it and you can use that use your imagination you'll, you'll work it out and the other tool I've got is this and I brought a tanning kit in from Australia to try it out which I'll use for these skins and this has proved to be fantastic you see the teeth on it now again I used to make with these myself so again if you're on a tight budget you can make these get an old bit of steel and um, just use a grinder or a file and put teeth in it like so so I don't know if you can see that the lights not too flash here or you can get one of these in from this company and I'll put a link on the site and I think they're about $20 New Zealand plus postage to get it over here or there may be a supplier in New Zealand so uh, have a look around I'll do a bit of research and if I find out where you can get one I'll uh, post that in, in another video right we're ready to get to our splashing stage and we'll do that now what I didn't show you in the skinning video was how to turn the tail of the possum inside out so get yourself I use an old knitting needle it works beautifully and then all we do is cut the tip of the tail off probably the I don't know about half a centimeter off the end of the tail just that bit there like so haven't got my sheath on me so I'm not putting my knife away as I should as I said in the last video so there you go I'm a bit of a hypocrite but anyway I'll put it there get your needle um, and then all you do hopefully you can see this as you start to fold the skin in on itself like that get your needle in and then fold it over the knitting needle like so and so what you're effectively do doing is turning the tail inside out now it might take a little bit of practice but you'll get it now we have a look at this end see what's happened our tail is now inside out like so and then you just pull the knitting needle out okay now I've deliberately skinned this possum a little bit rough because if you're brand new to possum skinning and possuming your skins are going to look a bit like this when you're finished this skin normally I wouldn't bother with them um, but again it's just for demonstrations purposes she's starting to mulch you can see the blue patches there that's where new fur is coming through so we're into November now um, this possum was caught up in Waiuru and to be honest it's I won't probably tan this skin but I'll show you the steps anyway 
So this time of the year, unfortunately, it's not a great time to get skins. So we need to get all this flesh off and we need to get the fat off because if we don't, we're going to have fur slip. Fur slip is where the fur comes away from the skin and you end up with a motley, moth-eating end product, which you don't want. So get your fleshing tool and um, pull all that meat off. The other thing we want to do is break the membrane up. Now we'll do some of that now um, and then we're going to salt our skin twice and then after we have salted it twice and left it for seven days, we'll finish processing the skin with our scraper or our scrapers and we're going to end up with a really, really good product. So get your tool, put your skin over the board like so and then just start scraping that flesh off like so and be thorough uh, I spe I'm speaking from experience and get as much off as you can you won't regret it because you'll end up with a with a skin that looks amazing on the back as well as on the front and you won't get first slip so we're going to just go over and progressively do the skin until we move get all this flesh off now it's a slow process but that's life sometimes you need to spend a bit of time to get a good result probably most of the time actually so break that membrane up as much as you can with your tool and get all the flesh off depending on where you are in New Zealand and how healthy your possums are too um, dictate how much fat there is on the skin. I did it one the other day and there was that, I reckon I got half a cup of fat off it. Greasy, horrible possum fat. Good for your boots though. Though it does tend to attract low flies and uh, you'll have an audience wherever you go in the bush. So use this scraper to get your flesh off. You can also use this one. And again, just work your skin. And get that fat and get that flesh off and see how it's starting to go a nice white colour there. We want that all over the all over the skin. Holding your skin, pulling away from yourself like that, and just work it slowly and work it method methodically. And again, have a look on YouTube. Um, there are other people that tan that tan skins or have tanning videos. Not many from New Zealand that I've found, but there's some good ones from the states. They're doing different animals like raccoons, um, beaver you name it, but you'll learn from them as well. Keep pulling that flesh off. Yes, your hands will stink at the end of the day, but so what? Bit of soap, we'll get rid of that. And uh, Sue uses a lot of hand cream. I don't really need to use it because the possums do it for me. So use this one here, again I'm just pulling away from you, get that fat, grease and flesh off as much as you can. Now once we salt it, it's going to make the job a lot easier, so this is just the first stage. So we're just getting the really, getting the tissue off, getting as much fat and breaking that membrane up where we can. Um, Okay, no doubt you're starting to get bored and you're looking at your watch, so I'll keep doing this and when I've finished, I'll show you how to salt it. Now if you're going to keep the tail, make sure you do the tail as well because there's a lot of fat on there. So I just tend to use this tool and just work it. Again, pulling away from yourself on the board. See the stuff that's coming off it? I'll show you. It's clean. There's a lot of fat on a tail, and if you don't do this, what will happen is it, the tanning solution won't penetrate properly, and it will look gross, and the hair is going to fall out, which you don't want. It will look like a flea-bitten skin, which after all the work you put into it is a bit of a nuisance. So anyway, do the tail, and just be thorough. Now just a couple of things um, that I probably didn't tell you in the skinning video is uh, when you um, go to skin your possum, don't skin don't skin a hot possum. In other words, if you just killed your possum, don't try and skin it. All that will happen is the fur will come out. Now as you're watching videos from overseas, they'll tell you that the most important thing to do when you kill an animal 
is to skin it immediately on the right, but it doesn't apply to possums. Um, the fur will come out and you'll end up with a mess. So in winter, just once it's killed, hang it up overnight in a cool place and then skin it the next day. Um, you need at least four hours, I prefer eight to nine, uh, to, to get a really good um, job done. Anyway, so our skin's ready to be salted, so I've scraped it, and then it's just a matter of now of putting salt on it. So I use a tray like that, which works really well for me. So get your skin, get your salt, make sure it's um, not iodized, just plain salt. Um, I just had a bit of a look around and on the net, and you can get uh, pool salt, apparently that works fine too, and it's a lot cheaper, and it's not iodized. So if you're gonna do a lot of skins, it's a cheap way to go. So get your salt, and be generous with it and just rub it in um, all over the skin you want to get every nook and cranny so chuck your skin in this is where the tray is good because if you lose a bit it stays in the tray and you can use it again and so we're going to salt the skin all over it until we get a nice layer all over it like so and make sure you get the tail too by there by the back side in fact you can open that up now if you want um, so put your knife in there and just cut and there you've opened it up so rub it in err on the side of generosity don't be dutch and then all you do once you've got that in there if you don't kill yourself with a board like so just check it again be very thorough. Now we're just going to leave this for 12 hours and then we're going to do it all over again. Up on the head there too, see, so see up on here there's... You don't need to tan the head and you don't need to tan the tail if you're going to make a throw for your bed. So um, just take them off, but again for the purposes of this video we'll do the whole lot. You may just want to skin for your wall or whatever or on the arms of your chair. So get that in and then once you've got your salt on the skin, in fact this is going to need a bit more, that on. You want enough salt on there so basically you can't see the colour of the skin. So, tail up there, rub it into the tail. We're going to fold the skin over the tail. So once you've got your skin well covered, fold it in half onto itself like that and then just roll it. Now see there I haven't got that very well done so a bit more salt in there and then roll it on itself. So roll your skin up like that. Now don't put it in a plastic bag because it'll the liquid that comes out of this will just pull get into the fibre of the, the fur and you'll have a manky horrible looking skin that's going to be very hard to clean and it will probably putrefy anyway. So what we do is use a, a um, either a hessian sack or if you're cheapskate like me or Sue, go to the op shop and get some old um, pillowcases, cotton ones. They work beautifully. So we just use an old cotton um, pillowcase. They last for a while, then they go rotten with all the salt in that. But that's fine. Then you just uh, burn it, buff it, do whatever you want to do with it and use another one. So put the skin in there, leave it overnight, and then next day get your skin out. So we've got some in here that I did previously. Open it up, and what I do is I shake the old salt off, it's had it. So if you're somewhere where it doesn't matter, just shake it off, and then re-salt the skin again. Now this has been done twice, so I won't do that, but you get the idea. So we, we um, salt it again, fold it in half once it's salted, roll it up. Now it looks terrible, but trust me, this skin will come out looking beautifully. Roll it up again. And this time, once you've done that, is you leave it in that a sleeping bag, not sleeping bag, in the pillowcase, in a cool place for seven days. Once you've done that, you're ready to do the next stage. So you have to have a little bit of patience, but trust me, it's worth it. Okay, so this skin has been scraped, salted, um, shaken out, salted again, left for seven days, and now we're ready to, to get it, um, to scrape it again. Then we're going to wash it and the washing is really important because you need to use a little bit of detergent to get the fat out. If you don't get the fat out of the skin 
again you're going to have trouble with your tanning agent penetrating and uh, you'll have hair slip so especially with possums they're quite a greasy skin so right I'll show you what I do next okay now if you have a look at the skin you'll see that there's still some tissue there that we need to remove and the salt's going to be our ally at the moment it's going to make that much easier to remove okay so this is pretty straightforward get your tool and start scraping now you don't want to put holes in your skin obviously so you don't want to force too much but look at that see how this it's pulling off all that rubbish and we're getting back we're moving that outside layer that membrane we're breaking it right up and we're going to remove it completely so just work your whole skin piece by piece and use your other tool as well use this one now again this takes time but the result's going to be stunning if you do it properly and I'm sure you will so just work your skin slowly and methodically until you get rid of that membrane and you're going to have beautiful leather see that so we're getting back now to the skin itself we don't want to go through now we want to do that over the whole skin so just if you've got a fleshing beam it makes it a lot easier as I've already mentioned we haven't got one because we live in a truck but this works fine for us okay I'll show you the skin when it's finished and it's ready for the next stage again you can see there's there's a little bit of malt there but that's fine and if you're if you're a young person and you're still living at home it might pay not to do this on mum and dad's lawn or whoever's looking after you because you'll kill the grass so just be mindful of where you do it salt's pretty pretty potent stuff okay I'll be back to you soon okay now for a bit of an advertisement uh, as I've lived in the bush in New Zealand and traveled around I've met some real characters and I've started writing about them um, and there's some really special people out there trust me so if you'd like to read about them, which would be great, go to my blog. It's, on, it's called gonebush.org. That's one word, gonebush.org. And uh, have a look. So I've written about a couple of old brothers, uh, Len and Lou, another guy called Charlie, and I've just started writing about one of the most interesting people I've ever met, and his name is Wurzel. And man, was he a storyteller. So I'm going to capture the stories that he told me. I'm sure you'll find them entertaining. Anyway, have a look at the end of this video and uh, there'll be a link there um, or just type in gonebush.org and it will take you there straight away. Appreciate it. Anyway, this thing here has been fantastic for tanning skins and if you can afford it, I highly recommend you get one. I think they vary in price from between $60 to $100 New Zealand. You can probably get them for next to nothing in the States or wherever. It just makes tanning skins so easy. But having said that, you don't need one. Just an old bucket will do. But for the purposes of this video, we'll use this. But if you haven't got one, just use a bucket. It'll work good as gold. So I've got the skin now to where I want it to be. And um, that membrane's gone. Okay, and now what we need to do is get that fat and grease out of the skin. So chuck it in your easy wash. Take the lid off. Put your skin in there. Now chuck some water in. So I'm going to do a few skins, so I'll fill it almost up completely, and don't do that. And you use this not just for washing the skins, but also for the tanning process itself, and what it does is it gives you an amazing result. Um, because you need to agitate your skin several times a day because you get air pockets in there and um, if you get an air pocket in obviously the tanning solution is not getting in so you need to get a stick if it's in a bucket and, and poke them around and uh, stir them but the beauty of this system is all you do is when you go past it give it two or three wines whatever on the handle every time you think about it and your skins will, will get completely covered in the, in the solution there'll be no air pockets and you'll get a very good result so you want about a teaspoon, there's probably a bit more, of um, detergent in there to start with. Whack your lid on, screw the top up, and again, you can do this in a bucket. So don't think, oh, I can't afford a hundred bucks or whatever, um, and, and don't do it. Just you do it in a bucket, you'll get good results. Just remember to agitate those skins every day uh, when you've got the tanning solution in, 
and to wash them thoroughly. This is a really important part of the operation because, and I can't say it often enough, there's a lot of oil and fat in the possum skin and we need to get it out. So once it's in there, just do this. And I do this for probably about, I've only got one in there at the moment. After I go off camera, I'll do the rest of my skins. You can get up to about, I wouldn't do any more than six or seven skins in this at a time because what will happen then is you will have dry spots in there where the water, well not dry spots, but you may get air pockets in there. So do six or seven skins at a time, big skins, and um, just do them in, um, in batches. Okay, so I've been doing this for a while now. So open it up. It also puts a slight um, bit of pressure on the contents again, which helps to clean things up. Get your skin out. You'll find it's gone back to the way it was when you skinned it, and just get that water out and detergent. Um, you can get fanatical, which I am often accused of being, and what you can do next is um, do all your skins in fresh water to remove the detergent, but you don't need to from what I've read. Okay, so just for now, wring that skin out, and then if you want to, rinse them out, and then you're ready for the next stage, which is putting them in the tanning solution. And then things start to get exciting because you're getting close to the end product. All right, I'll be back with you soon. Okay, our skins have been thoroughly washed. I've got five in here at the moment. And I actually put your crook before. Um, I'm trialing a new tanning kit, and I'll tell you about it shortly. But it does um, emphasize the fact that you really need to rinse the skins well. So what I'm gonna do is drain these, and then I'll rinse them twice with fresh water, and then we'll get on to the next step. Now the beauty of this thing is, to drain it, all you do is put this onto here, like so, and leave it uh, under the top, and catch the water, it's pretty, it's full of salt and muck and what have you, like that, loosen the top and just leave it um, until it drains, it'll drain, you can go away for an hour, come back, the water will be out of them, uh, then rin rin rinse your skins out, and then we'll go to the next step in the process. So while this is draining, I'll go and have a cup of tea and uh, be back soon. Let's go. Okay, the kit I'm trialling, it's called a Horns commercial tanning kit. Um, I got it in from Aussie to try it out and we'll see how it goes. I've, the reason I'm trying it is because the results look really, really good and it's highly economical when you work out the number of skins that you can do from a kit. In the past, I've used letters in New Zealand and that works really well and um, yeah, go and get one if you, if you want to get cracking straight away. But we'll see how this goes, and if it works out really well, then um, maybe you want to look at getting one in yourself. It comes with that um, fleshing tool, and to me it seems like really good value for money, and maybe we could talk to them and get them to retail this product in New Zealand, I don't know. So, unlike the leaders, there's a couple of stages in it. With the leaders, you, you basically skin, scrape, salt, scrape, wash and then just put the put it in the tanning solution and agitate it until the skins are tanned. With this you do it there's an alum tanning component and then you use the chromium. And I think that's why they get such a good result, such a professional looking result. So I've already made up the chrome tanning solution. So in there I've got 400 grams of salt and 250 grams of alum. It comes with a kit. So we'll put that in here. Obviously I should be wearing gloves but we're in the truck. And guess what, I can't get my hands into the gloves that Sue uses, so um, I just won't get any stuff on me. So put that into your container, carefully like that. So again, that's 400 grams of salt, 250 grams of alum, and this is the first part of the process. And then we've got some warm water and a measuring jug. So I'm going to put a litre of water in there to start with. So that's a litre, and we're making up we're making up 10 litres of brew, so that's the first litre. Put that in. Now that's reasonably warm, it's not hot, hot, it's just warm. Putting your top on. And again, this is where this little hand washing machine comes into its own, because now we can just mix it up. So make sure the top's on firmly, like that. And then just... Obviously, do this, mix everything up, make your pickle up. Now, if you've got a bucket, just use a stick or a spatula or whatever with your bucket, that's fine. 
Um, it's just a lot simpler with this thing. So I'll just mix that up. Okay. That should probably do it. I'll have a look. The only thing you've got to watch is you don't tip everything out. Okay, so, so that's that's mixed nicely. So now all I need to do is put nine litres of water in there. So my nine litres of water is measured out and they specify rainwater, which is great because we catch rainwater off our truck roof. That's what we drink each day. So I'll put that in. So that's good to go. Now it's just a matter of putting the skins in. I'll just grab those. Now, with 10 litres of the alum solution, you could probably do seven skins easily. I've probably overdone it a bit. You could probably get away with five litres if you want to be frugal with the um, if you want to be frugal with this with the kit, uh, it'd be interesting. I think you could do probably about 50 or 60 skins with the kit if you use it properly, and that works out at I don't know just you know, a couple of bucks a skin, which is fantastic value for money. Right, so you've got those in there. I'll take it off here for now. And um, just give it a really good agitate for a few minutes. They say to do it uh, an hour later and then twice every day for about four days and then we go on to the next stage where we use the chromium part of the tanning solution and then it's just a matter of putting them out to dry and um, they have a breaking solution there as well that you rub into the skin so they don't turn into cardboard when they've dried and uh, then you go on to the next stage of the process so I'll end this video um, at this stage uh, the next video will show you that uh, will be in four days time or five days time We'll do the chromium tanning and then we'll go from there to picking the skins out and then we'll go to um, drying them, um, breaking them with the, the, the um, softening solution and then cutting them, sewing them and uh, you'll be well on your way then to having your possum skin throw or whatever you want to make. So again, I really appreciate you watching these videos. Um, please subscribe to our channel. Um, it makes a difference, a big difference for us. We don't make any money out of this, but it just lets us know what's happening and it means when people do a search, there's more opportunity for them to find us, which would be great. And it'd be great if you had a look at our stories, or my stories, on gonebush.org. Uh, you'll probably see it coming up on the screen shortly. Just click on that or um, just type in gonebush.org. Thanks for watching and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.